today. As the weather, 85 and hazy, a lot of sunshine, south wind at 15. This field goes left to right, south to north. And you may be viewing this on Facebook Live. The Cowgirls, a deep ball played defensively by uh, them. And is Illinois uh, getting it back here? No, it's going to be the Cowgirls who will send it forward up the far side wing as Oklahoma State looks to go on the attack in the first two minutes of this match. He cross along the near side, taken here in front of us by Hannah Webb. And Webb will send it forward. That ball is blocked by Illinois and up into the stands. And look out down there. A couple of fans nearly got clobbered by that ball. It'll be a throw in for the Cowgirls along the near sideline. Second ever meeting between these two teams. I mentioned the first one was in the NCAA tournament here six years ago on a whistle and a hand check foul here. And this is on Illinois. This will send the ball forward for Oklahoma State. Illinois lost to Missouri. They've beaten DePaul and Washington. They lost to them also. Illinois State They won against Evansville and Miami. They've won their last two and now a foul here on the Cowgirls, and the ball belongs to Illinois for a free kick along the near sideline. One of those wins against Evansville was in overtime, a 2-1 win in Evansville. This is their fourth road game of the year of their seven matches so far this season. Cowgirls are home for the fourth time this year today where they are 3-0. and Ball played to the near sideline and will be inbounded by Illinois on a throw-in. Randy Cook, I mentioned the referee, Chris Strickland and Jason Rector are working the sidelines and Nima Sara, uh, Sagahafi is the uh, substitution official at the table. We have another foul here. This will be on the Cowgirls and so it will be out of bounds, I believe, actually here and it's going to be a throw-in for Illinois. Played here in front of us is Maroney on this near side. Looks for the cross. Goes deep to the far side to Murray. Murray, right side of the 18, crossed the way from us, looking for the centering kick. Unable to pass it to anyone except a cowgirl who intercepts, and it's brought back the other way by Julia Lenhart. Now Jones, deep up the ground, far side. This will be Kumba So. So trying to play it back toward the middle. Long shot, and that's going to go in from the left corner of the front of the 18 box. She not only beat the defender right in front of her, but also beat the keeper, and the cowgirls are on the board. Kumbasso with her second goal of the year. And Oklahoma State is quickly on top. The Cowgirls have this wind at their back, but I'm not sure with that strong leg and a, almost a 1v1 there situation defensively. And then the keeper, not sure she wasn't screened out, but Kumba had a great kick and the Cowgirls are on board. Just three and a half minutes into the match. Not even that long, about 3.15. And Oklahoma State with the lead of 1-0 here in Stillwater. Illinois with the ball off the kickoff, working down the far side. Again, going from right to left into the forward end. There's a deep ball into the 18. Keeper's just going to come and fall on it at the right edge of the six. And a nice play by Angaro to make that play on the ball. Angaro with her sixth and now seventh game this year. Three goals allowed, a .77 goals against average, and 12 saves. She's helped on three shutouts this year, and her record is 4-0-1. Dalen Cunningham has played goal for in every minute for Illinois. Three and three record, one shutout, 29 saves, nine goals allowed, and a 1.5 goals against average. And that goal total is now 10 on the season. Here's the Cowgirls bringing it down again. This is Woodard on the wing. Here's Beffer, the cross back to the middle, trying to go to Haley, and the ball into the air and knocked down by Illinois and turned back the other way. Illinois trying to play it to the center of the ground. They have a man there, defender on her. Again, the wind in our mics here, so again, we apologize for that. We're outside, and there's not a whole lot when it gusts that we can do about it. That gives you a little more volume, which gives you a little more wind. Ball kick back to their defenders, and so they'll start the offensive charge over again. Well, the Illini, 1-0 Cowgirls here. We're in the fifth minute of this game. Nice intercept in the back end by Webb, and it'll be brought forward by Woodard. Woodard will bring it down, set it up. Now a deep ball and nobody home. Illinois keeper will come out. That'll be Cunningham again to get that one for the Illini. They'll have a game at uh, Oklahoma on Sunday while Abilene Christian comes here to Stillwater to take on the Cowgirls. Middle of the ground, Woodard playing it to the near wing. Now Kumbaso to the wing. Here's Rodriguez, now Beffer. Effort at midfield, playing it back to Jones toward the middle. Nice touch into the side of the 18. Here coming down on the right side is Webb. A little shot and a dribbler, and the keeper falls on it with a defender falling on her. And a nice save over there by Cunningham. 
As that ball nearly got past her. Again, it's an angle play here, and you're seeing a lot of that this year if you've watched the Cowgirls either on our feed here that we do on home games or on some of the TV broadcasts or the uh, Internet broadcasts that have been done out there this year. A lot of angles to the shots this year, and here's a foul on the Cowgirls at midfield. We'll give the ball back to Illinois. A lot of angles on the shots this year is where I was going, the way they play with this wing-back setup, and the Cowgirls get a lot of touches that way and nice opportunities off the corners at the offensive end. The ball by Illinois intercepted by the Cowgirls, and so they'll play it back the other way. And going from left to right, the ball's kicked and off Illinois into the area of the bench here below us for Oklahoma State, so that ball belongs to the Cowgirls. Again, when the wind blows, there's not a whole lot we can do about it here, So, and it's probably going to blow most of this match. It's 1-0 Cowgirls. We're in the seventh minute here in Stillwater. So trying to dig it out near side. It'll belong to the Cowgirls on a throw-in right in front of their bench again. The wind has really picked up here in the last half hour. It was only about 10 or 12 miles an hour. Now it's about 15 to 20. Deeper ball out of bounds. Cowgirls... We'll throw it in, and Illinois, a good job of digging it out to intercept over there and send it back toward the middle of the ground. That was a good play on their part by Lauren Cecla. She's the junior out of Napierville, Illinois. They have quite a few Chicago area players on this roster for the Illini. Cowgirls intercept at the other end at midfield, and we'll play it back forward from their defensive side. Again, going from left to right on offense here in the first half of play. 1-0 Oklahoma State. 37.50 left to go before halftime. Illini intercept defensively. They play four in the back side. And we'll try to send it forward, playing it ahead. And open ground there. We'll see if they can do anything with it. They don't. And, in fact, they missed their comeback player at the far side wing, and so it belongs to the Cowgirls at midfield on a throw-in. Illinois will have... The two games this weekend, and then they'll open Big 12 play, or Big or, or Big 10 play, I should say, with Ohio State and Penn State on the road next weekend. Cowgirls do not open Big 12 play until a rematch with Oklahoma two weeks from today here in Stillwater. Deep ball by the Cowgirls. Keeper will take it and just punt it up in this wind, where it will just hang up at midfield in the air, fall to the ground, a couple of headers, and then it's played back by Illinois, and they'll just kick it back to their keeper. A little touch there. We'll send it back where it came from, up the far sideline. Again, just underway here in the first nine minutes. There is a 1-0 Cowgirl lead. And are knocked down by the Cowgirls off a deep ball. They keep it to the center of the ground. Illinois trying to intercept over here on the near wing with uh, Cisla again. And they'll play it forward after they get a turn. Hillman with a good play at midfield. Now a deep ball by Illinois to the far corner, too far in front of Mayday. And it'll go for a Cowgirl throw-in on the far sideline. And every time we're here, we see more construction over on the far side and the north side getting underway here of the rebuild of this facility, a $20 million redo that will be open next summer, next uh, fall, for the exhibition schedule. Down the center of the ground, the Cowgirls with Beffer to the wing, coming deep to the corner. That's going to be Hannah Webb. Can she catch up to it? Yes, across into the 18. Illinois just kicks the ball out of bounds. This will be a throw-in deep along the near sideline to our right for Oklahoma State. Nine and a half minutes gone. There is no score. There is a score with the Cowgirls getting an early goal, rather, from Kumba So. And a 1-0 lead. Ball played off Illinois, and they're trying to get it out of their own zone. Playing from our right to left. Cowgirls just have a step quicker to the ball there. And a nice play defensively by Charmaine Morgan, and then... Just trying to kick it to the center of the ground. They do, and it's played forward by Kim Rodriguez. Rodriguez, a centering pass. They're in front, a chance for Woodard, a shot, and it's going to go wide, and it may have been deflected. No, it was touched last by Oklahoma State. Coming in from the left side, the goalie's right. That ball went to the far side of the far post. So a goal kick for Illinois here with just over 10 minutes gone here in this matchup. Cowgirls have a 1-0 lead here in Stillwater. Kick a high against the wind. Again, knocked down by Illinois this time as they play it shorter. This is Morgan Maroney sending it up the far side. Maroney to a deep ball. That'll be played to the center of the ground. Cowgirls trying to intercept and getting tied up there, but then they get some help and send the ball back to the midfield circle. 
before it's knocked down there by Haley Woodard. Woodard, center of the ground, looks to send it deep for Jones, but too far. And the ball belongs to Illinois as they'll pick it up and punt it away here. They should probably leave it right on the ground outside the 18. That's what Cunningham does and sends it back the other way. In 1-0 Cowgirls here in the 11th minute. Morgan in the back end at midfield. All plays it Webb off the foot, and it's intercepted by Illinois, and they'll play it ahead. And then it's intercepted back at midfield by Kumbaso, who has the goal today already. Here's Jones to the middle, and it's taken by Illinois. They'll turn it again, trying to play it forward. They send it back to their defenders. Illinois in the dark uniforms, if you're watching on the Internet. Cowgirls in the home whites today with the orange numbers, and we still have folks coming in, and there's still time for you to come on out, and especially if you're a student, it doesn't cost you anything to come watch Cowgirls soccer. So at midfield at the circle, up to the near side wing, Morgan. Going to play it on the wing here to Beffer, who sends it down to Webb. Webb, a little cross in front of the 18, played by Woodard now to So, halfway between midfield and the 18. Rodriguez comes into the forward end, sets it up on the far wing, nearly kicked it out of bounds, but the Cowgirls able to keep it. And then the ball goes off the foot of the player over there, Claire Ganser, and it'll be a throw-in for Illinois. Cowgirls have had the two good looks at goal and have the one shot and goal to show for it so far in the first 13 minutes. The ball by Illinois again played forward, and the Cowgirls... And there's a foul by Illinois, a little hook there as they bring, looks like Jones down. She's up and all right. So a free kick just past the halfway line to the right here by the uh, uh, Cowgirls. Who takes this kick? It's going to be Rodriguez. Left-footed kick all the way down into the penalty box area or the penalty square area where they would kick one. Penalty kick. And that ball right to the keeper. She'll just roll it out to the defender, and Cowgirls will start playing defense again as Illinois brings it back the other way, again going from right to left here in the first half. Cowgirls off the ball quickly and bring it back up the ground. Jones again right up the center of the ground, sends it to Beffer. A little give and go there. Jones behind the ball goes down inside the crescent moon in front of the 18. Contact, and it comes right to the Illinois keeper. There is no foul, as Randy Cook says play on here in the 14th minute. So a high kick against the wind again, and again the wind is in the front of Illinois' defense, right in their face. Cowgirls have it at their back, and they come streaking down the field. Here's Beffer off a kick from the wing. A shot, and it's dead on to the keeper. The rebound is put in by the Cowgirls. That got away from Cunningham and went into the net off the foot of Haley Woodard, if it does in fact count, and I think they're going to say it does not. The offside flag went up over here on the near side, and so no goal. Haley was just in ahead of the play, so no goal. And here's a free kick for Illinois. Against the wind, strong, but again, the wind knocks it down. This gives the Cowgirls a chance to have numbers forward, and they bring it ahead. So they're going to try it again. Here's so at the middle of the ground. Kuba stops now, gives it off to Beffer, taken off the ball by Illinois, just sends it up the near side wing. See if anybody can run it down. Morgan will for the Cowgirls. Down to Webb. Webb spins around her man and loses the ball, and it's kicked out of bounds by Illinois, and here's a throw in for the Cowgirls deep to our right. 1-0 Oklahoma State. So we played right at 15 minutes. Ball into the square. A chance maybe for Woodard here on the near side. Along the back line, the ball is blocked out. Does it go out? Official says, finally, yes, and they're going to say this is a corner for Oklahoma State. Illinois had two defenders down there, but lost the battle in being able to keep the ball in bounds or not touch it last before it went out, so this becomes a corner for Oklahoma State. The Cowgirls have had 48 corners to the opponents, 19 this year, half of those in the first half of games. This will be Ganser who will take the corner. Sophomore out of Plano, Texas. Here's the kick into the six. A header way up in the air. Keeper leaps in the square and makes the play on the ball. That was Woodard, I think, with kind of her back to the goal. 
was trying to make a spinning header there and got height on it, but didn't get it forward very far, and that gave the keeper a chance, Cunningham, to get out to the ball. So she'll have a free kick and into the wind again. It knocks down. It is knocked down and forwarded on a header by Illinois. And then to the deep end of the far side, Cowgirls just kick it out of bounds. That ball is lost up into the construction zone. There are ball boys everywhere today, and they're literally ball boys today here at the, at the game. Illinois off a throw in, trying to play it forward, coming in on the wing, a chance from the right side, across off of the Cowgirls there, Morgan in the six-yard square, taken over to the far corner by Ganser, and it'll go off of her and out of bounds to a throw in for Illinois at the 12-yard line. Cowgirls lead 1-0 here. We've played 16 minutes. Ball played to the top of the 18, cleared away by the Cowgirls to midfield. That's Morgan to Jones, just trying to play it forward. Illinois will have numbers on the other side of the halfway line. A few more clouds have moved in here, which is fine. Again, a nice afternoon, a little breezy. Deep ball played by Illinois very quickly, taken there by Angaro at the top of the 18. Colin Carmichael in his 22nd season here at Oklahoma State. He's coached here along with Karen Hancock. Every year the Cowgirls have had a team. Justin Elkington in his ninth season as associate head coach or assistant coach. Deep ball by the Cowgirls, top of the 18 at the other end, and the Illinois keeper Cunningham just uh, scoops it up, and now she'll kick it off the ground against this 15- to 18-mile-an-hour win. Cowgirls have it at their back and take the ball off the ground and bring it the other way. Down the center of the ground, Lenhardt over here on the wing to Beffer, taking off the ball for a moment, but has Webb behind her with help on the near side wing. Webb over here with Beffer on the deep corner now, and the ball played off Illinois for a throw-in for Oklahoma State at about the 10-yard line. Gets it in very quickly. Lenhardt up with Beffer and Webb on this near wing. Lenhardt across, blocked back to the back line. This will be a goal kick, or pardon me, it'll be a corner kick for Oklahoma State. First sub of the game is uh, the Cowgirls. This is Taylor Olson, who had the hat trick the other day at UTSA, the freshman out of San Antonio, who did that in less than seven minutes in front of the home crowd, and Haley Woodard gets a nice hand as she comes to the bench. This is just her third game back after injury. Again, they're going to limit her minutes today. Cowgirls are again without Marlo Zoller as she has earned a red card in the last game. There's the corner blocked off by the keeper. It stays at the top of the 18. Cowgirls with a shot. That's blocked by a defender. And played off off the rebound. Way outside, far wing, Rodriguez sends it into the 18. Cleared away from the top of the uh, square by a defender. And Illinois will turn it, but the Cowgirls intercept and have it right back before the halfway line. On the attack again, here's Beffer. Leading in front, Linhart. Little uh, heel kick. Trying to find So down the middle of the ground. It pinballs around. And the ball is played out of the 18 by the Cowgirls. But Webb keeps it in the area for a header. Now a chance for So and a one-hopper right to the keeper from inside the near post. Milo again picked up a red card on Sunday, and so she has to sit out a game by rule. That's not a Cowgirl rule. That's a Big 12 NCAA rule. But we'll have her back on Sunday, and she's here at the park today. Substitution getting ready to come in here for Illinois, too. We'll check that in just a moment. 26-10 left before halftime. 1-0 Cowgirls, an early goal in the first three minutes by Kumbasso. Cowgirls on offense, bring it down the far wing. Ganser looks to play it forward. Now a touch there, trying to find Jones, and it's played off by Illinois back to the center circle. In Illinois, the dark uniform team, if you're watching on Facebook Live, or at okstate.com, they're going from our right to left. Cowgirls in white with the orange numbers going from left to right. Illinois defends the goal to our right. Ganser touch pass in front, trying to find Beffer. Here she is coming in from the right side. Defender picks her up. Shot, a leaping grab. Then it goes off the keeper and that one goes into the goal, I believe, and yes for Oklahoma State off the rebound. May have been Taylor Olson again coming in from the right side, or make that the left side, the right of the keeper. J.C. Jones, they're going to say, got the goal. She was down there as well. That would be her second of the year. So the Cowgirls jump on Illinois early and get on them again here off a rebound, and that's the second or third time that the Cowgirls have had a shot that the keeper has failed to cover cleanly. And that time it cost them 
near the far post. So it's a 2-0 lead for Oklahoma State with 25-22 left to play in the first half. At the half, by the way, we'll recap all the numbers and also tell you what's going on nationally and the Big 12 in soccer. Off the kickoff, Illinois trying to get something going offensively. They've had very little look so far. Out of bounds off the Cowgirls, and they throw in for the Illini. Illini have been outscored 9-7 in games this year. The Cowgirls have now outscored their opponents 22-4. And a pitch three shutouts. Down the ground near side is Catherine Ratz, a senior out of Zionsville, Indiana. And played off the ball. The Cowgirls turn it, bring it back the other way. So... And then a push in the back by Illinois and a foul as Beffer went down. Free kick at the halfway line here for Linhart. Played ahead Webb and intercepted by Illinois. And the Illini turn it, bring it back, but then lose it quickly. And look out, we have a foul. This is after the touch which gave the Cowgirls the ball. It's Illinois free kick at the halfway line here. 24-13 left in the first half. Cowgirls have a 2-0 lead here in Stillwater. Kick will be taken, <clears throat> excuse me, by Alicia Barker. Low line drive, front of the 18. Chance here for Illinois with a play off the top of the 18 square, left-footed kick from the far wing and taken by the keeper at the six-yard line. We'll play to the top of the 18 there, and then it just hit ball back out for the chance from the right side. Cowgirls playing it ahead in the forward end to our right. They find Beffer off a touch. Jones goes down, though. We'll check on her. She's up and okay. Beffer over here on the near side to get it back to J.C. We just got a goal a moment ago. Kumba So, a little pass. Oh, too hard. Nobody was down there to get it off the far side of the 18. Cowgirls lose it for a moment. Now get it back. Jones goes down again after contact. With Ariana Veland, everybody okay? And play on, says the official. We're approaching the halfway point of the first half here in Stillwater. Foul by the Cowgirls now and a free kick for the Illini. They're going to let the goalkeeper, Cunningham, take this one. Jalen Cunningham, a sophomore on a Reynoldsburg, Ohio. They have a number of players from the upper Midwest, as you might gather, but they have players from different parts of the country, Washington State, for example. And they have Lawrence Smitherman, who's from Heritage Hall, from Oklahoma City, a sophomore defender who we're likely going to see in the game today. Hear the Orange Power chant there in the background as Illinois knocks a ball down. This is Hope Breslin, who's just checked in, a freshman out of New York State, out of Massapequa High School. That's in upper New York State, I believe Adirondack area, if I remember correctly. If not, it's southern New York. Here's a deep ball, bad, a nice sliding tackle in front of Mayday by the Cowgirls, and a good play by the defender, the freshman Kim Rodriguez, to force a throw in. That was a very good play there by Herb. Crowd continue to come in here at the Cowgirls Soccer Complex. And students get in for free. And they're going to say the Cowgirls touched it last year, so Illinois will have a throw in. About the seven-yard line. Deep ball back line. Taken ahead into the 18. Cowgirls can't do any. Well, actually, they do do something with it. They clear it at least out of the deep end of their zone and force Illinois to start over again here. This is Rats over on the far wing. Kicks over there at the corner. See what they can do with it there, if anything. Ball played off of Murray. Now deep along the back line. Cowgirls having to defend here. A shot on Garo with the save. A little header touch there by Webb after the ball bounced off Michaela. And that sends it back to the near wing. Well, they'll have to start over again. Ball high in the air there. And that's going to go across the back line. And that's going to force a corner kick here for Illinois. That's twice that Kelly Mayday, whereas number 15, has been forced to... Uh, do something different with the ball than what she wanted to do over here on the near sideline. Now the corner kick taken right here below us to our right. This will be right of the keeper on Garo. The wind will bend this ball out. Does toward the penalty line. 
Ungaro a touch, knocks it down. Cowgirls can't clear now, finally do, and get it over on the far wing. Illinois has numbers in the forward end. Trying to dig it out of the corner across. Cowgirls have numbers in front of the six and clear it all the way back to midfield up the far sideline. As we're down to 20 minutes left to play here in the first half, Oklahoma State with a 2-0 lead on Illinois. Matchup of the Big Ten and the Big uh, 12 here in this matchup. By the Illini. This last couple of minutes there is, here has been their best offensive threat of the day. They bring it down along the far sideline again. Another cross, and right to Ungaro goes off her hands again, and she just falls down to the ball, which played off of her in front in the six-yard square, or the front of the square anyway, and was able to pick it up. So she'll use her big lead, leg here and punt it away with the wind all the way into the forward end. Big play by the Illini to head it down. They're going to try to keep possession of it here with... 19.30 to go before halftime and a 2-0 score for Oklahoma State. Cowgirls working the offensive end to our right, so they defend the goal to our left. That ball deep to the keeper, taken there by Cunningham. As Olsen was coming in on the ball, so he'll just play it off to a defender. And the Illini right to left will bring it back on the offensive end. 19.10 to go before halftime. They play it across the halfway line. Trying to work it here in front. This is Murray again. Center of the ground. Sends it deep. And intercepting was Webb. And now to another cowgirl who sends it back the other way from the far side. I believe that was Ganser. Now played deep here to the center of the ground. And Bepper on offense coming back the other way. Now Jones down the center of the ground. Tries for the sliding tackle. Cowgirls try to get the ball back. And Oklahoma State's going to get called for a touch here. And it's kind of the second player on the ball, and they called Kumbaso for a little touch foul there. Illinois, another foul by the Cowgirls as Lenard gets called for the hand check. And two quick whistles here by Randy Cook, our official. Right at the midfield circle, the center circle here. It's going to be taken by Illinois on a free kick with 18.20 to go before halftime. Cowgirls with a 2-0 lead here. And again, our crowd continuing to grow, and there's plenty of room for you to come on out and enjoy this game before maybe some dinner and then high school football either here in town tonight or elsewhere as Stillwater is home tonight. There's a blast by Illinois off the top of the 18. It's blocked by Morgan. And another blast from outside the 18. Left-footed kick and a diving save in front in the six-yard square by Ungaro. So Illinois showing some pressure here in the last five minutes or so. They have stepped up their game a little bit. Trailing by two. Cowgirls play it forward and go back the other way. Along the near sideline, Charmaine Morgan trying to play ahead to Webb. Gets taken off her feet right in front of the Cowgirl bench. And this will be a throw-in coming up here for Oklahoma State. We've got subs here coming in here, I believe, for Illinois also. Coming in is Patricia George and Gabby Chapa. Chapa is a 5'2 freshman defender out of Colorado Springs and Patricia George, a 5'8 junior forward out of Chicago. So after the foul, a free kick here at the midfield stripe along the near sideline. And this is Lorraine Tresfield who sends the ball deep toward the top of the six. Now it'll be taken there by Olsen. She centers it in front, across, and coming in, but a diving play there in front of, it looked like Beffer, by the keeper Cunningham. They have kept her busy this afternoon. Sun comes back out here from behind the clouds with 17 to go. Beffer, they can't clear. There's a shot, and that one is deflected by the keeper off over. And it may have clipped the crossbar on the way out, and I think that's what happened. That ball hit the top of the crossbar over the keeper's head, and it's a goal kick for Illinois. They will sub out here. First, the Cowgirls sub as Cammie Huddleston checks in, the 5'5 junior from Alito, Texas. Like Haley Singer has checked in here for Illinois. Midfielder, freshman out of Napierville, Illinois. And a whistle, and we get a foul here on the Cowgirls. So free kick for Illinois, and hold up, says the official. Talking to one of the Illinois players about something here. Came at the end of the play. I believe that's Ariana Veland at the official... Randy Cook is talking to. 16.20 to go before halftime as the clock restarts. And a deep ball by Illinois off the kick from beyond the halfway line to our right. 
Why I try to knock it down. Chance here in front for Breslin. Played off the ball by the Cowgirls. Nice play there. Jones and Huddleston get it over to the wing. It'll be brought down the far side. Kick deep for Olsen. That ball will trail across the back line, or the sideline, I should say. And it'll belong to Illinois on a quick throw in. Illinois had about a five-minute spurt there where they had two or three chances. Cowgirls with goals from So and Jones here at first three minutes and in the 25th minute. And so it is a 2-0 game. Here come the Illini down the center of the ground. This is George. Off to the far wing for Murray. Very little short kick knocked down by Morgan in the 18. Cowgirls again defending to our left here. So Illinois going from right to left. Near side wing, Chapa. Oh, and a nice play by So to take her off the ball and take the ball from her. Now a deep ball along the near sideline. This is Lenhardt. This will trail deep but go out of bounds. And so this will be a throw-in for Illinois to the right of their own bench, which is to the right of the Cowgirl bench. Everything on this near sideline this year because of the construction across the way. 15-04 to go first half. Oklahoma State with a 2-0 lead. Illinois off the throw-in, plays it over on the far wing defensively. Cowgirls spread out with five defending to the right of the halfway line and five more the other way, plus the keeper and now a foul. As again, the Illini taken off the ball. This will be from about the 40-yard line. This will be a kick here, a free kick for Illinois as a foul was on Oklahoma State. This gives the alumni, or the alumni, the uh, Illini, there we go, a chance to Maybe set something up here inside the 18. We'll see who takes this kick. It's going to be Maroney. I don't know. They're going to go the other way and kick it deep toward the six. Header by Illinois in the air. And a kick comes toward the goalkeeper, and it'll be knocked down by Ungaro inside the six-yard square. So kind of a set piece there as they try to do something offensively and unable to have a very good look on goal, and with the wind, a deep kick on the punt. By on Garo, this ball bounces about three or four times and ends up in the hands of the Illinois goalkeeper, Jalen Cunningham, inside her 18, with 13.40 left in the first half. The Cowgirls with a 2-0 lead here in Stillwater. And the punt will come across the halfway line as the wind's kind of died down a little bit here, and now a foul on Illinois right in front of the official Randy Cook, and this will be a free kick for Oklahoma State. Cowgirls had the two goals, but they also had a couple of stretches, one in particular before Illinois started their run. That gave them a lot of look on goal. And in fact, led to the second goal. Deep ball, played across the halfway line, taken up on the corner, and across is blocked out, so this will be a corner kick for Oklahoma State to the right of the keeper, Jalen Cunningham. Looks like Taylor Olson will take the play. And another sub for Oklahoma State as Amy Wynn checks in, the redshirt freshman out of Houston Memorial. And she'll come in for Kumbaso. And she'll get a nice hand coming to the bench here at the 11-minute mark of the left in the first half, about 12 minutes actually. The corner will be blown into the six-yard square. It's meant toward the keeper, a header by Illinois from the far post. That's played off to the sideline, a one-on-three, and so Illinois just clears it across the line. The Cowgirls have numbers back at the other end, and they'll send it forward. Kirsten Saragusa has checked into the game and made that kick there. Five-six sophomore out of Rowlett, Texas. That ball to the back line again. And let's see if they call this a corner, if they call this. No, they're going to say this is a goal kick here coming up. It was off of Oklahoma State for Illinois. Twelve minutes left in the first half. Cowgirls with a 2-0 lead here as we wait the goal kick from Cunningham. My nice color is, of course, blue and orange. Cowgirls orange, black, and white. Knocked down by the Illini. They play it right to left into the forward end with 11.40 to go before halftime. And looks like they can't do anything with it. Cowgirls will take it over by the... New scoreboard, it's temporary over in front of the construction zone. Now we'll just play it back against the defenders and start over again. And come up the near side, this is Saragusa. 
Sends it deep along the near wing. Now playing forward and ahead for the Cowgirls is Morgan. Morgan in a 1v1 coming in right side. Gets around her man who falls down. A chance in front. No, across. That's blocked off by Illinois. Inside the 18. Cowgirls have numbers back toward the center circle, but Illinois will turn it and bring it ahead. Nice recovery there by George. Plays it into the forward end. George again on the touch, looking for the far wing to send it ahead offensively. Cowgirls have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine players back here defensively at the moment. And they just have numbers, and so they will win the ball back and get it back and go the other way. Low kick along the far sideline. Trying to dig it out, Oklahoma State. They do, and play it ahead to win. Win in front, played off the ball. Illinois will have it back again here with 10-20 left in the half. 2-0 Cowgirls, our score, early goal, and then a goal midway through the first half. Saragusa again, near side wing to win. Now Kirsten will bring it up the near side. And Morgan on a touch, sends it back to win. Down the uh, near side line to Charmaine Morgan, who has a couple of goals this year. Morgan looks for the cross, gets around her man. Now we'll play it in toward the six, played off the ball by Illinois, and they force a corner kick. That was a nice move. By Charme to get around her man there outside the 18 square. Subs here for Illinois. This is Katie Lee, a freshman out of Centerville, Virginia. And for the Cowgirls, Allie Rivers checks in, a 5'5 junior out of Trophy Club, Texas. Rivers will come in for Webb, who's had a very good first half. So the corner, Kim Rodriguez will take the corner. Left footed kick, that'll be to the left of the keeper. Cunningham, strong kick into the six, headed away by Illinois to the other side of the ground. Cowgirls will try to run it down near the corner, get played off the ball. It's going to go across the line, and let's see if they call this a corner or a throw-in. It's going to be a deep throw-in for Oklahoma State on the far sideline. Down to under nine to go, and again, a touch here by, you now it's by Oklahoma State, so it'll go off to Illinois. The line's been way up the ground. It first signaled one way and then changed it. 8.48 to go before halftime. Cowgirls with a 2-0 lead here in Stillwater. Second ever meeting between Oklahoma State and Illinois, both here in Stillwater. Another one in the NCAA tournament in 2011. Center of the ground is Breslin. Trying to play it to the wing, and it's run down over there by Allie Rivers. Girls will play it ahead. This is Jones. Off to win. Back to J.C. She may turn it and just send it backwards and does. Now gets the ball back from Saragusa. On the wing near side. Plays it ahead to win. Too strong and it's intercepted by Veland. Veland is the tallest girl on the ground for Illinois at 5'10". Eight minutes left first half. Illinois on the attack coming down the near wing. This is Lee. Looks for the deep ball to George for the cross. And nobody home on the other side. The Cowgirls will run this ball down. And this will be Allie Rivers. And she stays inbounds with it. Cowgirls keep it in the back end. And play it out of the right side or the far side of the 18 square. Morgan over there as the Cowgirls look to turn and try to get it set out of their own zone. They go left to right on offense. Might I have some numbers back here. So they're... Giving them some trouble at the moment, and they lose the ball. Here comes Illinois. The Cowgirls can't, can't clear. Here's a two-shot bounce or two-hop shot bouncer from outside the top of the 18, and taken by Angaro for the punt. With 7:10 to go here before halftime, that chance by Vila. Two-nil Cowgirls. Deep ball by OSU, a header by Illinois. They just kick it to the sideline, and the Cowgirls will have a throw in across the way. Again, 85 degrees and the wind out of the south at the Cowgirls back here as we view this one before halftime. 6.45 left in the first half. Oklahoma State again with a 2-0 lead, getting an early goal from So and Jones with a goal in the 25th minute. Illinois trying to work the ball around out there, but unable to keep possession. Now the Cowgirls off a strong kick. Morgan will run it down along the near sideline. 
Along the back line, a big cross in front. Keeper with a hand on it. There's a deflection off of an Oklahoma State player coming in from the far wing. But Illinois had defenders inside the 18, and so they clear it out. The Cowgirls were able to play it back forward again. Over on the far side, Rivers, and that ball ends up off another player going out across the back line, and that'll be a Taylor Olson corner kick coming up here for Oklahoma State with under six to play in the first half. Cowgirls five corners, if my count is correct here. We a right-footed kick angled toward the square with the wind blowing the ball toward the keeper. That ball's deflected, and it clears through the six-yard square. It is off Oklahoma State as they tried to head it in, and so this will be a goal kick for Illinois. Cowgirls have scored 11 goals now in the first and second halves of games this year for 22 on the season. Illinois has allowed five goals in the first half of games this year, three in the second half and one in an overtime. Ball played off the top of the ground here at the center circle, and the Cowgirls look to run it down, but Illinois has a wingman coming in on the far side. Trying to block him out over there, unable to do so for the moment. That's Rodriguez. She finally is able to turn the ball and kick it back up the ground for a throw-in. It's not very deep kick, so it's going to be out about the 15-yard line or across the way to the left of Ungar. A little header off the throw-in. Now that player gets it back. And the Cowgirls with contact, and this will be a foul on Oklahoma State at about the 16-yard line. So to the left of Ungar, a free kick. Angles to the left from the right point with four and a half to play here before halftime. Cowgirls with a 2-0 lead. Trying to keep the shutout. Two-man wall from the wing far side. Illinois has to be worried about offsides a little bit here. And they'll take this free kick. Trying to bend it toward the square. Now they start it and then stop. Now we'll start it again. Kick is strong into the six. Looking for the header. They miss it. Player goes down. No foul. Cowgirls with a sliding tackle to play off the ball by Jones, and he'll send it up the ground for a throw-in on this near sideline. Chapel will take it here with four under four to play now before halftime. Taken by Murray. Murray center of the ground, looking to play it forward. Cowgirls have numbers and win the ball, but then a collision. Players go down. They're going to call Illinois for the foul. They say they initiated the contact, and the foul that knocked down, I believe it was Amy Wynn, is going to result in a Cowgirl free kick. Strong ball played off the ground toward the far wing. Rivers a collision. Nobody touched the ball. They run it down, try to play it back. And the Cowgirls have numbers at midfield with 3.10 left in the half, and so they'll just play it ahead. Aragusa up here on the near wing at the midfield line. She and Morgan play touch with it here. Now Jones, she goes down in a hand check foul, and once again, frustration by Breslin. That's the second time, I believe, in this half that she's been called for a hand check foul. Now under 2.50 left before halftime. Let's see if the Cowgirls can get another one here before the break. They lead 2-0 here. Kick to the side over there. Rodriguez, far side, looks for the centering kick. Chancer in front. Olsen wins the ball. Chance in front, shot, and it goes wide of the far post, deflected by the keeper who went down to her right. That may have been last touched again by Olsen off the rebound, and it was, and this will be a goal kick for Illinois. So two chances here for the Cowgirls, and that was played well into the square. Taylor Olsen with a chance for the goal. She had the hat trick in less than seven minutes in the game in front of the home crowd for her down in San Antonio on Sunday. Last time that was done was Crystal Lopez's four-goal game here against Arkansas Little Rock in 2011. 16th time, by the way, on Sunday that the hat trick has been done in Cowgirl history. Strong ball by Illinois along the far wing with a minute 45 left in the half. Cowgirls win it, and here they come. Down the center of the ground. This is Julia Lenhart. Plays it ahead. Here's Olsen coming in from the left side. A chance there if she can stop it. Gets to it. Shot goes high and wide of the near post from the left corner of the six-yard square. 
as we mentioned with our coaches show the other night, we talked the last two weeks with Colin Carmichael about the way this team sets up offensively, a lot of angles to the ball this year as opposed to straight ahead running. 113 left in the half. Goal kick here for Illinois. Strong to the halfway line. Circle. Rebound off of a cowgirl and played all the way back to the keeper with one minute left in the first half. Wind kicks back up here again at Cowgirl Stadium, Cowgirl Soccer Complex. Deep ball by Illinois across the halfway line. Cowgirls get a touch and off a player to the far sideline. It'll be a throw in for Illinois with 40 seconds left in the half. Well, the Illinois had a little five minute uh, push there where they were able to have some offense, but not enough to do a lot here in this first half. Cowgirls have definitely been the aggressor and may have another chance here with 28 seconds left in the half as they win it at midfield. Illinois to intercept, though, and they'll play them off the ball, and that may take the Cowgirls away from another scoring opportunity here with just 20 seconds left in the half. Deflected by Morgan. This will be out of bounds to Illinois with 10 seconds left in the half. And we'll go to halftime with the Cowgirls with a 2-0 lead here. Ball's played to Olsen right in front of us to Morgan. She'll just kick it into the bench. That's going to take us to halftime. And two goals in the first half. And Oklahoma State has a 2-0 lead here against Illinois at the break. We'll come back and recap the first half and a lot more coming up on our halftime. This is Cowgirl Soccer from Learfield. Hi, I'm Bill Knight for Bill Knight Ford. All sports are built on tradition. But at Bill Knight Ford, we know that here in Oklahoma, it's more than just a tradition. It's a way of life. Forged from loyalty and dedication. It's unwavering pride that survives the losses and is ignited by the wins. Bill Knight Ford is proud to support the OSU Cowboys and Cowgirls, Stillwater High School Pioneers, and the Perkins Tryon Demons. We wish them the best of luck this season. The Iowa Tribe of Oklahoma presents the INFR Finals Rodeo on Saturday, September 23rd at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday the 24th at 9 a.m. Bring the family and watch professional cowboys performing tricks full of danger and excitement. Experience the thrill of the Region 8 AMAIRA Rodeo on the Iowa Tribe of Oklahoma Outdoor Event Grounds. Tickets available at Cimarron Casino, the Iowa Travel Plaza, or online at nativemarketplace.com. For full details, visit CimarronCasino.com. Pharmacist Carla Knight of Tiger Drug knows singing and music and readily shares that knowledge. In fact, she just told me that perfect pitch is when an accordion is tossed into a dumpster and lands on a banjo. Good to know. Tiger Drug, 9th and Walnut in Stillwater. Tiger Drug's Neil Conkey became a pharmacist, but only after trying to be an actor in Hollywood. Truth is, the only job he got in his brief career was as Ned Beatty's stunt double in the movie Deliverance. But he doesn't talk about that much. Tiger Drug, Ninth and Walnut. At Stillwater Medical Center, we're asking for more. From our nurses. And our staff. We're devoting ourselves to providing unhurried and compassionate care. Our mission is simple, to perfect the patient experience. It's everything you expect from a major medical center. With all the things that you love about a hometown hospital. Learn, Learn more about, about our mission at stillwatermedical.com. Welcome you back to Cowgirls Soccer. Halftime here in Stillwater, Oklahoma State with a 2-0 lead. I want to correct myself. They gave that first goal to Haley Woodard. That is her second of the year. It was unassisted at 3.07 of the first half. And it was J.C. Jones, her second goal of the year with Anna Beffer on another assist for Oklahoma State. That gives her seven on the season. And Beffer's right up there among the national leaders in assists. And that was a tap in after an initial save that rolled off the hands of the goalkeeper, Jalen Cunningham. And the Cowgirls with a 2-0 lead here at the break. Cowgirls were called once for offsides, and that was on a play where they had a goal called back because they were offsides at about the 13-minute mark of the first half. The team numbers, Illinois was outshot 11-3 by the Cowgirls in the first half. Five of those shots were on goal, and two were goals for Oklahoma State. So uh, 11 shots and five on goal. Illinois, three shots, all of them on goal. In the first half, the Cowgirls had five corner kicks to Illinois' one. Fouls were 10-6, Oklahoma State, and each team made three saves in the first half. Michaela Angaro was shut out in the first half, 45 minutes, three saves. And for Jalen Cunningham, two save, or three saves, but two goals allowed in the first 45 minutes 
of this matchup, and the Cowgirls at the half lead it by a score of 2-0. Individual numbers first for Illinois. Arana Veland had a shot and a shot on goal, and Katie Murray two shots and two on goal as well in the first half, and as I mentioned, they had six fouls. For the Cowgirls, Anna Webb a shot and a shot on goal, Anna Bever two shots, a shot on goal, and an assist. J.C. Jones with two shots, a goal, and uh, also a shot on goal for that goal. Kumba So with a shot and a shot on goal. Haley Woodard with two shots, shot on goal, and a goal. And off the bench, Taylor Olson with two shots, and it was uh, her goal that was called back on offsides, and Cammie Hulson with a shot in the first half. As the Cowgirls played five off the bench in the first half, Illinois played only three subs in the first half. So, uh, again, 11 shots, five on goal, two goals, one assist, ten fouls for Oklahoma State here at the uh, halftime mark, and the Cowgirls have a 2-0 lead. We'll come back with more as our halftime show continues after a timeout. This is Cowgirls Soccer from Learfield. Cowboy fans, skin cancer continues to be a growing epidemic, but Stillwater Dermatology Clinic is there for you. With locations in Stillwater and Ponca City, board-certified dermatologist Dr. Thomas Hall is available to help you with all your skin care needs. Dr. Hall treats acne, psoriasis, and all skin disorders, and also offers cosmetic and laser services. Call 405-533-DERM or visit stwderm.com today. Whether you're looking for a bite to eat before the game or a place to celebrate another Cowboys win, University Dining Services has you covered. With more than 30 individual restaurants across campus, there's something for everyone without ever having to leave campus. You'll find everything from freshly made sushi to top-notch burgers. So pull up a chair, dig in, and feed your inner cowboy. Be sure to learn more about University Dining Services at dining.okstate.edu. Cowboy fans, stop by Chris's University Spirit today to sign up for the Orange and Black Spirit Club for only $40. You'll receive a membership club shirt and a 20% off card good on items for one year from purchase. All you have to do is stop in at 244 South Knobloch on Campus Corner in Stillwater before it's too late. Also visit us online at chrisuniversityspirit.com today. This is Debbie, owner and pharmacist of Charlie's Discount Drug. In times like these, we all need to find ways to save money. At Charlie's Discount Drug, we believe in giving you the highest quality services at discount prices every day. We provide free prescription delivery, and we give discounts on prescriptions for patients under 6 and over 60. These are just a few of the quality services available at Charlie's Discount Drug. So call 624-3535 or come by 723 South Walnut and save today. Remember, discount is our middle name. Welcome back to Cowgirl Soccer as at halftime, Oklahoma State has a 2-0 lead over Illinois. Cowgirls have home game, of course, on Sunday with uh, Abilene Christian. And that will end the two-game homestand as the Cowgirls will take a West Coast trip next week to uh, Cal on Sunday the 17th and to San Francisco to take on the Lady Dons on the 15th out in San Francisco, and then the other game, of course, in Berkeley as they stay in the Bay Area. Oklahoma will be the next home opponent after Sunday as they'll start Big 12 play on uh, September 22nd, two weeks from today, as they will take on the Oklahoma Sooners, a 4 o'clock matchup here in Stillwater. And they go to TCU, then back home to take on Baylor on October 1st, and then a big three-game road trip to West Virginia October 6th, Iowa State October 8th, and then Texas Tech on the road the 13th. Well, the Cowgirls come home for their final two regular season games, K-State and uh, Kansas. K-State, of course, playing soccer this year in the Big 12 for the first time. They had a provisional team last year to get ready for their work in the Big 12, which begins uh, here this season. And by the way, looking at the uh, numbers here, Kansas State has uh, gotten off to a 2-2-1 start, by the way, on the season. And they play uh, today. Uh, as well as they're hosting Central Arkansas tonight at 7. Uh, Kansas here on the 22nd, K-State on the 20th, and then at Texas, right now the only other undefeated, untied team in the Big 12, as West Virginia suffered a loss to Virginia a couple weekends ago. And then the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City, November 1st, 3rd, and 5th. So remember that and watch the Big12Sports.com website for ticket availability for the Big 12 Championship at uh, Swope Soccer Village there in Kansas City. 
The coaches poll this week has UCLA as a new number one team at 6-0. and They're also number one in Soccer America and number one in Top Drawer Soccer. Stanford is the number one team in my hero sports. Stanford is number two in the other three polls. West Virginia is number three in the uh, soccer coaches poll. The West Virginia Mountaineers with a loss. They're four and one on the year. The coaches poll has Clemson, then Penn State, and then North Carolina and South Carolina. Virginia, who defeated West Virginia in their only loss. Then Florida and then Texas A&M, who the Cowgirls tied last Friday in College Station. Duke is next at number 11. Duke and West Virginia are playing tonight. More on the Big 12 schedule in just a moment. USC is number 12, followed by Florida State, then Rutgers, Georgetown, Wisconsin. Wake Forest, Oklahoma State is 18 in the coaches' poll, moving up one spot. Kansas next at number 19. Then UCF, Utah, Nebraska, SMU, Cal, and Colorado. And Cal, a team that the Cowgirls will see next week out in Berkeley. In the region, West Virginia, then Kansas, then Oklahoma State, followed by Texas, Baylor, TCU, Texas Tech, Rise, North Texas, and Coastal Carolina. And that regional vote is important not only for the national poll, but also to uh, give you a chance to kind of look at yourself against other parts of the country. Cowgirls were not ranked, of course, when the season began and find themselves now in two polls with an undefeated season at this point, 5-0-1. Again, they play Abilene Christian here on Sunday in the matchup at 1 o'clock. Big 12 games going on here later will be Texas Tech and Arizona State. And that game is uh, at Arizona State. Number 11, Duke. Number 3, West Virginia at 6 o'clock at Morgantown. Number 25, Colorado is at Texas. That game is on the Longhorn Network tonight if you get that. Northeastern is at TCU down in Fort Worth. Central Arkansas at K-State, as I mentioned. And if you have the Cox Cable Network, if they bring up all the alternate channels tonight, you might be able to see that. A game with uh, Central Arkansas and K-State in Oklahoma City or in Tulsa. Depends on what they do with their cable system. Number 19, Kansas, is at St. Louis playing the Billikens. Portland hosts Baylor, and Iowa State is at Cal State Fullerton. Two late games on the West Coast. Tonight. Then on Sunday, Illinois will come from here and go to Norman and play the Sooners, who are off today. Down in Norman at noon, West Virginia hosts Richmond. Our game with Abilene Christian and Oklahoma State. Texas A&M is at Kansas on Sunday. That'll be number 10 against number 19. Northeastern at, uh, that was Texas A&M at Kansas. Northeastern at Texas. Creighton at Kansas State. Baylor in Washington. Iowa State travels to number 12 USC and Texas Tech at Arizona. Those games this weekend in Big 12 soccer. Both teams are getting ready to come back out onto the ground. Again, the goals by Haley Woodard and J.C. Jones. Woodard's second goal in three games back was unassisted at 3.07. J.C. Jones' goal for Anna Beffer, her seventh assist of the year for Beffer. For Jones, her second goal of the year at 19.38. The Cowgirls have a 2-0 lead at the break. Second half action when we come back. This is Cowgirls soccer from Learfield. Hi, I'm Bill Knight for Bill Knight Ford. All sports are built on tradition, but at Bill Knight Ford, we know that here in Oklahoma, it's more than just a tradition. It's a way of life, forged from loyalty and dedication. It's unwavering pride that survives the losses and is ignited by the wins. Bill Knight Ford is proud to support the OSU Cowboys and Cowgirls, Stillwater High School Pioneers, and the Perkins Tryon Demons. We wish them the best of luck this season. You deserve quality health care. But at Stillwater Medical Center, we believe you also deserve an unmatched patient experience that's close to home. That's why our physicians, nurses, and staff are committed to providing compassionate, quality care. Right here in Stillwater. We're here to prove that the best patient experience is moments, not miles away. Learn more about our commitment to excellence at stillwatermedical.com. Hey kids, have you gotten your parents to sign you up for the McDonald's Pistol P Partners Kids Club? Pistol P Partners is the official OSU Athletic Kids Club designed to get kids excited about OSU and become fans at a young age so they can be fans for life. 
For just $25, members get in free to OSU soccer, men's basketball where some exclusions may apply, women's basketball, tennis, wrestling, baseball, softball, and can have exclusive parties with the athletes and much more. Visit okstate.com to sign your child up today. Also sponsored by Academy Sports and Mercy Health. Cowboy fans, the newest addition to the Cowboy Athletics family is the Oklahoma State University Athletics mobile app. The OSU Athletics mobile app is your comprehensive mobile companion, providing you with exclusive content, personalized offers, live stats, schedules, and so much more. Play tailgate trivia, find parking directions, and even access your ticket account for mobile ticketing. Find the OSU Athletics mobile app in the Apple Store or Google Play and download it today. Your home for OSU Cowgirl Basketball, KGFY Stillwater, Cowboy Country 105.5 FM. Second half about to begin here in Stillwater. Oklahoma State will defend the goal to our right here in the second half and have the wind in their face. Illinois, with their keeper Jalen Cunningham, will defend the goal to our left. And they'll work from left to right with the wind at their back here in this second half of play as the Cowgirls... We'll try to pitch a shutout here and keep Illinois off the board for their fourth shutout of the year if they can get it. Right now with a 2-0 lead, goals by Woodard and Jones. And again, no Marlo Zoller today as she is off the uh, roster today because of a red card sitting out a one-game suspension. She'll be back on Sunday. And by the way, Sunday's game, promotion-wise, buy a ticket, get a ticket. That'll be the plan here on Sunday. That if you buy one, you get a ticket for free. So two can come from the price for the price of one here with the game on Sunday with Abilene Christian, Cowgirls only have a handful of home games left when you take a look at the schedule. Illinois and then Baylor, Kansas, and Kansas State. Only four home games left after Sunday. Just five left after today. And those are spread out to the end of this month, the 22nd with Oklahoma. This will be a packed house and then some that night. And then obviously the three other home games with K-State, Kansas, and Baylor left to play after that. The wind has picked back up here. It's 85 degrees. The wind out of the south at 15 to 20, blowing at the back of the Illinois Illini. And they'll play on Sunday in uh, Norman and then have road trips to Ohio State and Penn State coming up next weekend to start Big Ten play for their team. Janet Rayfield, by the way, in her 16th year as the head coach, 181-17-2, an 0-1 lifetime against the Cowgirls, who have the opening kickoff coming up here. Referee Randy Cook blows the whistle, and the second half is underway. A reminder, after our game's over here, we'll have a short respite, and then we'll have more sports, as it'll be Perkins Trine Demon football tonight at McLeod. Free game starts at 6.30. Illinois trying to play it forward as they go from left to right, and Dig it out and bring it up the center of the ground. This is Sarah Warren who starts the second half, a senior out of Willowbrook, Illinois. And this ball was played ahead by the Cowgirls. Here's Woodard again in front. Chance here coming in from the side. A chance for Jones. Block. The ball trickles off the hand of the keeper and across the back line near the near post. And that goes out for a corner for Oklahoma State. Well, Illinois did a poor job there of getting it out of their own zone and just an opportunity there that was just off the hands of the keeper and again trouble by both these goalkeepers holding on to the ball today. Corner kick to the right of Cunningham. Ball spins into the square headed out by Illinois. Played off another header in the 18 and up the far sideline. And this will belong to no one at the moment as that ball trails off to the sideline and the Cowgirls will have a throw in. They'll play it defensively from right to left from halfway. Minute and a half gone here in the second half. The Cowgirls with a 2-0 lead here in Stillwater. Trying for another one here. Jones taken off the ball and Illinois will play it forward. Ball's kicked out of bounds and a throw in here for Illinois. This is off of Oklahoma State. Again, Illinois in the dark uniforms if you're watching on the internet playing from our left to right. Early goal in the first half by Haley Woodard. J.C. Jones with the second goal at 19:38. Rats with the ball for the Illini. Trying to play off of it there is Anna Beffer. Cowgirls try to win it outside the center circle and do. 
Nice play there by Lenhart, who brings it ahead. But again, Illinois has the touch and sends it back down the ground. Kim Rodriguez up the ground trying to find Woodard. Bounces off of her and played ahead again here by Cecilup. And to the center of the ground, Illinois will try to play it the other way. Goes off of an Illini player. Kumbaso starting the second half again for the Cowgirls. To Befford, trying to play it back to Kumbu up the near side. Junior out of Zurich, Switzerland. Played junior college ball here in the United States and then transferred to Oklahoma State. Befford at the center circle, plays it over on the wing. And now up the ground they come. This is Lenhart down the far side. Playing it into the forward end across is blocked for a moment. Illinois with a touch just sends it back up the sideline. This will be a throw-in for Oklahoma State. That'll be run down over there and thrown in by Charmaine Morgan, I believe. Even with us over here as we set up in the bleachers again this year for for this game and for this season, I should say. Here's Morgan again, a little short touch, but unable to get in front of it was Beffer. Had three defenders on her, and the ball belongs to the keeper. They kept Jalen Cunningham busy for a number of times in that first half with 11 shots and five corner kicks. They've already had another corner in this half for six for the game. Four and a half gone in the second half. Oklahoma State with a 2-0 lead. And I trying to get something going offensively, but again, the Cowgirls, Lenhart, oh, falls down. Now the defender and the offensive player both tumble. No foul, says the official play on. The Cowgirls with another tumble there with another Illini player and just win the ball off over here on the near side with Webb. Webb plays it forward to Rodriguez. A couple of freshmen there for Oklahoma State. And they'll bring it up the far side wing. A little touch there, Siraguza, with her getting the ball back from Lenhart. Now intercepted by Illinois, but they play it back down the ground. So the Cowgirls have numbers. Now let's go back to Morgan. We may send it back to the keeper. She does to Angaro, and they'll just start over again. Kayla starting and playing the second half again in this one. She appears to have earned the starting spot, at least for now, for the rest of the season. If the Cowgirls get a big enough lead, you may see Tanya D'Souza. She has played in five games this year, 207 minutes as a freshman. Pardon me, as a, as a senior, not as a freshman. She transferred here from Mississippi State. Off Illinois again, so another Cowgirl throw in. And we're five minutes deep into the second half. Cowgirls with a 2-0 lead. Another throw in coming up here. Over on the far sideline. Not a lot of action at the moment, but Illinois trying to keep the Cowgirls from doing something, and they win the ball. Play to the center of the ground. This is Murray, but the Cowgirls have numbers and run it down. Here comes Webb, center of the ground. Brings it up from right to left. On the wing near side is Woodward. Woodard plays it across and right to the keeper at the post. Haley goes down and slow in getting up as she took a tumble forward and landed on her stomach, but she's okay. And and she's had leg injuries and a concussion in her career, and so she's just now coming back. This is just her third game back, and so they they take it easy with her. She played just 17 minutes in the first half. Here's a chance with her coming in off a steal. little cross in front. Back for the shot. De- deflected and to the back line for a corner kick. Looked like Rats was down there to knock that ball down, and it skidded and... Tumbled across the back line, and Anna Beffer will take the goal kick to our left here along the near sideline. Cowgirls with their third corner already here in the second half. There's a header and a chance to hit the crossbar. And it'll be played out by Illinois, but the Cowgirls keep numbers at the forward end. That header off the right post and the top of the crossbar. Chance in front. Oh, Cowgirls can't get to the ball after Illinois deflects it. And it goes right to their keeper inside the 18 who came out to make the play on the ball, Cunningham. So a free kick here with the win for Cunningham. Let's see how well she punts this one. Strong and high. Wind carries it into the forward end. Big header there by the Cowgirls by Rodriguez. Ball touched a couple of times, kind of pinballs around. It goes past an Illinois offensive player. It's played back to So, and now up the ground, still in the... Defensive end here. Lenhart now with So again. 1v1 over there with Marbury. And 
Now Lenhart will take it and play it up the far side to Saragusa. 13 minutes gone here. Cowgirls trying to play it ahead. They do. Woodard on a one-on-three. Gives it off with Morgan coming in on the wing far side. Shot, and it goes just wide of the upper shelf of the near post. Goal kick coming up here for the Cowgirls. And again, we talked about this with Colin all season long. We talked about it on our coaches' shows, and we talked about it today on the pregame show. Attack, attack, attack. And that's what the Cowgirls are doing here with this new setup they have offensively. And it has worked very well. And they also have, I would say, a little bit faster team up front and maybe more players who can shoot the ball and get open to do that. That's a big key here. Illinois trying to play it forward. They have players along the near side trying to dig it out as Marbury again. So with a touch, it deflects off Marbury, and it comes back to Saragusa, who will play it at the four, at the defensive end. She falls down. Keeper, or rather the uh, defender, jumps over her, the offensive player. Now a foul here on Oklahoma State, and the Illini have maybe their best straight-on shot to the goal or opportunity for the goal here from about 25 yards out. 4 man Wall here for the Cowgirls, <clears throat> excuse me, at the 25-yard line. They've run up, faked it, and then kicked it with someone else here a couple, three times when they've had opportunities like this on balls off the point. Let's see what they do here straight ahead. The Cowgirls' wall will walk back to about the 18. Randy Cook sprays the foam for marking, and away we go. Here is the kick. Now, and it's taken straight to the keeper. A girl leaps, and the ball off her hands, but right in front of her, and she grabs it inside the near post, inside the six-yard square. Keeper cannot move forward out of the line. They have to play left or right to the line. If it keeper comes forward, that's a penalty. You have to play along that goal line inside the goal mount. Played back by the Cowgirls, and here's Saragusa on the far wing. Almost 10 minutes gone here in the second half. Oklahoma State with a 2-0 lead. First half goals by Woodard and Jones. Here's Kumba So down the middle of the ground to Lenhart. Kicks it over to the near wing. Here is Webb on the wing near side. Webb coming in at the point. Sets it up near the middle. Kick is blocked. Another kick is blocked and played out of the zone for a moment by Illinois. Cowgirls have numbers at the halfway line, but Illinois takes it away. They just send the ball deep the other way, and the Cowgirls have to run it down. And this is going to be played off of an Illinois plan coming in from the right left side. And a chance there in front with a cross blocked away by Rodriguez at about the 20-yard line, or about the 18-yard line. Illinois takes a deflection, plays it forward, but again, the Cowgirls numbers defensively, and they'll turn it and go the other way. Webb sends it ahead to Jones. And here comes Haley Woodard again up the center of the ground. Beats her man. 18, shot, and a diving save through a left. By the goalkeeper, Cunningham, at the six-yard line. Haley Woodard has that extra burst of speed to not only get past her defender, but also get to the ball at the same time. And that was set up perfectly off the near wing. Fifth save for Cunningham. Now back the other way, a tumble. Loose ball at midfield. Woodard across the halfway line here to Beffer on the near side. Cowgirls go from our right to left. Illinois intercepts and sends it deep. Rodriguez couldn't judge the win, and so no header there. She just goes back and gets the ball. A couple of touches, and the Cowgirls on the move again. Here's Lenhardt up the center of the ground. Past the center circle, playing it ahead. Woodard a chance in front. Shot comes into the six, and a diving play by the keeper. And again, Haley is taken off her feet again, and there is no foul. So it'll be a free kick for... The Illini with 33-30 left in the match. 57th minute here, and the Cowgirls with a 2-0 lead. Way out beyond the 18, the free kick here taken by the Illini. They sent it into the forward end. Again, they had about a five-minute stretch there in the first half, and they've had a couple of chances here in the second half. There's a nice cross that's deflected outside the six by the Cowgirls and one by Webb over here on the near wing. Webb to Woodard. Way back at the other end of the ground. This is Kumbasso, I should say. Near the back line, that ball's going to go out, and this will be a cowgirl throw-in. 
Substitution here, and Woodard will come out of the match. And then this is about the spot where she came out in the first half after about 17 minutes. And it'll be back in as she gets a nice hand. Taylor Olson, the freshman, coming in for Haley Woodard. We might see her before the match is over. And I'll play her about 30 minutes here today. Total, counting both halves. That's about half the match so far here, about 58 minutes in here. A little more than half. Cowgirls trying to get it out of their own zone off the throw-in. And now Jones tripped up. She goes down in a hand-check foul here on Illinois. This foul is on Catherine Ratz. Again, a buy one, get one free ticket offer on Sunday for the Abilene Christian game. We're on the air at 1245. And the first kickoff at 1 o'clock. Cowgirls will be on the road next week in California. We'll have our Colin Carmichael Coaches Show Tuesday night from Fuzzy's Taco Shop at 7 from the Strip here in Stillwater, right here on KGFY and on OKState.com. Here's Beffer at about the 25. Moves it over to Olsen. Strong kick, but right to the keeper inside the six-yard square. Cunningham wasn't fooled by that setup. She was just going to stay put. The ball ended up coming right to her. So play continues here. A free kick for Illinois. Header by the Cowgirls past the halfway line to our right. They'll play it back into the forward end. Nice touch there, and here comes Jones. Sending it up, trying to find Olsen. Olsen pushed off, and the defender went down. No foul, and Illinois runs back to the ball. And it ends up, the ball stays in along this near sideline. Boy, up in the air to make a play there was Murray to keep the possession and not allow the Cowgirls to have a throw in. Morgan runs down the ball, though, deep across the way in front of the scoreboard at the halfway line. And now out of bounds off of her at about the 25 of the Cowgirls. Illinois will have a throw in. Again, they go from our left to right here in the second half with the win at their back. Wind kicks up over 15 every once in a while and then drops down below 10. Now Illinois can't do anything with it. The Cowgirls will throw in. With 30-30 to go in the match. Oklahoma State with a 2-0 lead, all the scoring in the first half so far. Effort over in the corner. Nice cross with the left foot. Header out of there, though, by Rats. Now a chance in front and diving on the ball as it was played into the square to Jones. At about the eight was the keeper, Cunningham. They'll just send it out of there quickly, and here's Murray. And now the Cowgirls, nice sliding tackle by Webb. Play off the ball. Here's Jones again. Give and go to Kumbaso up the left side. So tries to work around her man. Centers it in front. Top of the square. Lenard shot goes up over the top of the crossbar. Goal kick for Illinois. And a sub here for the Cowgirls is Claire Ganser. who got the first half start. Is back in the game for Oklahoma State. As is Cammie Huddleston for the Cowgirls. Who played a number of minutes in the first half. 17 minutes. And Jones and Saragusa, the other player who goes out, both get a nice hand from this. Nice crowd here this afternoon watching this one here in Stillwater. Hard to tell with the me sitting up in one corner here how many people we have all together, but I'd say we're half full here, if not more. Somebody having to tie a shoe here, Huddleston. The Cowgirls are going to have a throw-in on this near sideline. There's Olsen with a touch off the throw-in right in front of us on the near sideline. To Beffer, plays it ahead. There's Huddleston, and she's offsides. She was offsides by 10 yards. So the ball belongs to Illinois. It'll be a free kick at about the 28-yard line, maybe the 30. Keeper will take this one. That's Cunningham. Waiting to approach the ball and strike it. She does. High kick. Strong toward the 18. It's knocked down by So. Why not trying to turn it? They can't. Now Huddleston goes down in a heap. And an Illinois player down. And she took the worst of it. Play on, says the official. They're going the other way. Beffer over to Olsen coming in from the right side. And a chance there is blocked out of bounds for a corner. But we have an injured player way back down the ground at the right of the halfway line. So we stop the clock. With 28-18, 28-16 now left in the first half. And this will allow everybody to come to the sideline. And Janet Rayfield and her training staff will go out there for the Cal- for the uh, line eye and check on the injured player who took a tumble. And the Cowgirls will also assist out there 
as well. And next week, the Cowgirls on the road at San Francisco on Friday. That'll be a 9 p.m. hour time start. And then a start that will be a little uh, later on Sunday as far as an afternoon match is concerned for the Cowgirls at Cal Berkeley. And they are ranked in the top 25 at number 24 this week. Not sure who the injured player is for Illinois. That, again, that was on the ball for a moment, and it was quickly played at the other end, and the official was running up the ground. So Illinois played a man short for a moment as, again, Randy Cook is operating toward the ball, which was headed toward the Illini goal. And then once the corner kick came, the sideline official, and again, the sideline officials, the scorer's table official, and the referee all in, in, are in communication with each other. They all have those little walkie-talkie things on them that they wear in their ears, those IFB units. And uh, they can say, because you know, it's hard to hear one side of the ground to the other, and with the wind it makes it even worse, hey, we have an injured player or whatever, turn around, and once the ball was cleared for the corner, that allowed them to come back with timeout now and take care of the injured player for Illinois. And I'm not sure what the injury is. Players on her back and moving and appears to be in some kind of pain down there just to the right and outside of the circle at the halfway line here for this matchup today. The Cowgirls with two goals in the first half. Haley Woodard her second. J.C. Jones with her second. Anna Beffer got her seventh assist of the year in the second goal. And so we have an extended timeout for injury here. And Coach Janet Rayfield out there checking on her player. And she has now brought her players to the sideline over here. They had been down at the south goal with the goalkeeper, Jalen Cunningham. Illini will go to Illinois, or pardon me, will go to Ohio State and Penn State next week. Then they're home with Maryland and Rutgers in the league. Then they go to Purdue and to Indiana. They're back home against Northwestern and Wisconsin and Minnesota. They go to Michigan and then have Iowa for their final game in October. Then the Big Ten quarterfinals start that next week and then to get through the quarters some teams get a bye then it's the semis and finals of the big 10 tournament that next week and then the ncaa tournament of course starts that second week of november and speaking of that tournament that's where the cowgirls have played illinois in the past playing them here in 2011 they appear to have brought out one of the one of those uh, blow-up casts that you put on an arm. And hopefully that's uh, not a fracture, but it would appear that that's a wrist or an arm or something. And you can, if you're watching, if they've got the, and again, I don't have the monitor here in front of me, so I don't know what scene is being shown on TV. But as we view it here, they are blowing up one of those casts that goes on your arm to stabilize what would appear to be a fracture on the right arm. One of the OSU police officers has now walked out there. Illinois training staff has been working on her near now here for about five minutes. And again, not sure who the player is. I don't want to speculate too much on the injury, but just from the uh, appearance of what is going on here, that would be the indication of what, in fact, is happening here. So we have a stoppage in play at nearly the halfway point of the second half. The Clock stopped with 28-16 left. Illinois will have a game at Oklahoma, the first ever meeting between these two teams, coming up on Sunday at John Crane Field. That game was on Fox Sports Go for live video and on TV at Fox Sports Oklahoma for our fans from the Illini who may be listening in on our broadcast here today. Whatever the injury is, and they brought the Gator out now to take the player off the ground. So this is a significant injury, apparently, for this player from Illinois. I think what we're going to do is we await the player being taken off the ground. We're going to go ahead and burn one of our post-game timeouts right now. This will take a couple of moments to get this done. And as I say that, they're about to pick her up. So let's just stay right here. And uh, she's was bent on her back. Now they help her to her feet. And the injury, again, significant enough, she's going to have to go get checked out at Stillwater Medical Center. And, again, we're screened out here, and I don't have a monitor to see TV. So not sure who the player is. But, again, they put that blow-up cast on her right arm. So 
that again is a significant injury as she will go off the ground here. And Illinois will have to play on without her and uh, also have to play with that in the back of their minds a little bit. Their coach, though, will say, hey, let's go get them. Let's get back out there. Words of encouragement to the Illini player who has now taken off the ground. So we'll just keep it right here. This play is going to resume here in just a few moments. And they'll get her to Stillwater Medical Center, which is only a couple of miles from here, if that. And they will get her checked out. But, again, that looks like a significant arm injury for the player from Illinois. So after all this, the Cowgirls will have a corner kick to the left of the keeper, Cunningham. And now everybody, including Oklahoma State, has to refocus after about a six-minute delay here, or seven. And play will now resume. The corner kick taken by Ganser, high toward the six. Knocked up in the air again. Missed by the Cowgirls a second time. Oklahoma State trying to see them and a reset here. Beffer, ball is blocked outside the 18 by Illinois. Knocked down by So. They'll take it back to the halfway line. Rodriguez will send it forward. Cowgirls have to be careful of offsides here. Olsen, there's a blast from 20, and it goes over the crossbar. So after all that, a goal kick for Illinois with 27-45 left in the match. And a two-goal lead from the first half is held up here. For Oklahoma State at 2-0, goals by Woodard and Jones. By the way, Justin Elkington will join us on our coaches show Tuesday night as Colin has a, a commitment somewhere else. And so we'll have Justin down at El- at, uh, at uh, Fuzzies on Tuesday night, 7 to 7.30. Join us for that. You can sit with us and listen in on the show. Here's Olsen in front of Chance. And they play it back toward the keeper. It's blocked off. Trouble. And sliding in is Huddleston as the keeper falls on the ball at about the eight-yard line. Chance there and just a step too soon, or maybe too late. Cunningham now punts it away with the win, deep to the other end of the ground. Big header here by the Cowgirls to knock it down, and taken by Illinois, but it's played off Oklahoma State, and a throw in here by Maroney on the near sideline. Gets it into Rats. Big cross from way out on the near wing to the back line. That'll go out for a goal kick. 26-30, 26-30 to go in the match. Oklahoma State that close to another shutout. They have three on the year. Agaro and DeSouza have combined on all three of those shutouts, by the way, for Oklahoma State. And the Cowgirls play it forward. At the midfield line, this is Beffer to the near wing, plays it to Ganser, who comes up. Now Anna loops in from behind and down the near sideline. Trying to find Huddleston. Gets tripped up, goes down hard. Play on, says the official, and that ball goes out of bounds for an Illinois throw-in, and the Cowgirls fans do not like that call. Can't say that I blame him. Colin Carmichael throws his hands up and says, what happened there? I'll tell you what didn't happen. Back to play we go. Here's Illinois with the ball down the far side. Hillman looking ahead, but kicks it out of bounds in front of her own man. This will be a throw in for Oklahoma State. Defensively to our right across the way with 25-20 left. Both teams have had opportunities in each half. The Cowgirls have had just a lot more of them in each half. Have a 2-0 lead, and it could be even more. Here is Rodriguez off the near wing. Plays it to Beffer. And has played the entire match here for the Cowgirls. Crosses it over to the far wing at the halfway line. And down the ground they come. This is Webb. Stops outside the 18. Plays it into the square. Played off the ball by Illinois. They'll send it back the other way. And Morgan will just kick it back toward the same spot at the top of the 18. See if they can run it down here. Chance there in front of Blast. And a two-hopper off the leg of Lenhart. Just picked up inside the sixth square by Cunningham with 24-20 to go. Cowgirls on top 2-0 here in Stillwater, trying for their second ever win in two games against the Illini. Back again at midfield. Cowgirls play it forward. Ganser off the touch, played off the ball, and a nice play by Rats. And the Cowgirls, they just kick it right to him. Here's Olsen coming in from the right side, tries to get her step, cross, blocked out, and a corner for Oklahoma State off of Illinois. 
Cowgirls have had, I believe now, five corners in each half today. And this is Claire Ganser again. Ganser, sophomore out of Plano, Texas, played at Plano Senior High, the original Plano High School. There's about a half a dozen of them now. Growing area of the north side of Dallas. Here's her kick toward the six. Popped up in the air by the keeper, and it comes straight down to her. Well, if you were designing that play by the goalkeeper, Jalen Cunningham, you couldn't have done much better if you were Illinois. Wynn kind of held that ball up and blew it to her right over there in the air where she could catch it. She'll punt it off the ground with the wind. And a big hitter here by Rodriguez. Cowgirls try to knock it down. They have to run to the ball. Illinois has a man down there. Coming in a shot. It's blocked from the right side. Mayday, and it'll go out of bounds off of Oklahoma State, who got it back up the ground along the near sideline. A nice defensive move there by Morgan. Coming up on the halfway point here of the second half. And the throw-in will be taken by Alicia Barker. along the near sideline. Trying to figure out what the holdup is here. Illinois has some players to sub in, but that's not the issue at the moment here, and I'm screened out as to what the problem may be. Okay, now we're set for play. It's a somersault throw-in. That's what the deal was, trying to get some room to do that. Illinois with the ball top of the 18. Over on the far wing, there's a blast that goes over the top of the crossbar from the left side. That appeared to be Murray over there. Now the subs for Illinois is Patricia George and Katie Lee check back into the match. And for the Cowgirls, Haley Woodard is back in, and J.C. Jones is also back in. So they are going to get Woodard some more minutes today. She had played about 30 minutes, 17 of those in the first half before going out a little bit ago. Before we had the slowdown because of the uh, injury to the Illinois player, it kept us off the ground for about six and a half minutes, maybe seven. Deep ball, Woodard, can she run it down? Well, back to the keeper, Illinois trying to defend. Defender falls down top of the 18. Woodard had a 1v1 but couldn't get the ball. Now it's played off to the near wing, Beffer. You hear the crowd appreciating that play. Now Ganser comes up, Illinois trying to intercept. And a foul here on Beffer, who just kind of looks and turns back at the official and says, you kidding me? And we're going to have a yellow card here on Anna Beffer. Beffer is called for the yellow and not happy about it. And I think they're going to bring the Illinois player over here, too, and talk to her about the play as well, as it was dangerous play. And that's what Colin Carmichael is being told here by the referee, Randy Cook. They may be giving a yellow card to her, too. They may have called it off. I'm not sure they didn't just say, well, you know what? Put it back in my pocket. In the event, it's going to be a free kick here for Illinois. We'll see if they counted the yellow at the end of the game. Barker sends it into the six-yard square on three hops, and it's picked up by Angaro at the far post. With 20-30 left in the match, Oklahoma State with a 2-0 lead here in Stillwater. Garo will punt this ball against the wind. And big, strong kick past the halfway line and the circle. Cowgirls try to knock it down. Let's see what they do with it here. It'll be taken back. Now Illinois will take possession and have it on this near wing. Effort trying to get in front of the offensive player who kicks it down the ground. Cowgirls will look to turn it along the near sideline. Gans for a couple of touches. Stay the ball, stays in bounds. Remember, it's not the player, it's the ball. If the player doesn't touch it while standing out of bounds. In this case, they did this time, and Illinois will throw in with 19.55 left. And again, the wind is picked up here again in Stillwater. Big header knocking the ball down, but Illinois' player falling down at the same time. So now Beffer for the Cowgirls off the down the ground kick will try to play it ahead. Instead, it pinballs backwards, and Jones runs it down for Oklahoma State. Plays it to Woodard, now to Huddleston. Up the near wing, here comes Anna Beffer. Beffer along the sideline, 1v1 on the wing near side. Tries to get around her man who knocks the ball down. Digs it out and plays it back toward the center of the ground. But we get a foul here. This will be called on Illinois, and so the Cowgirls will have the ball. This, I believe, and let's see. It's a throw-in. It was out of bounds off of Illinois. No foul. 
Throwing it into Haley, and then she gets called for the hand check on the back of the Illinois defender, Alicia Barker. At the 18-yard line, at the top of the square there, and so with 18.50 to go, a free kick for the Illini. Cunningham, low line drive with the wind, headed out of the center circle. Cowgirls with a big kick defensively, sending it into the midfield area. And it's played down by Illinois, who will send it up the far sideline. This is Chapa over on the wing, trying to play it forward through one man, now picked up by another. Chance here, and the ball played down into the 18. We've off the foot of an Illinois player, and it is, and it'll just be picked up by Agar. She'll have a punt here with 18.20 to go in the match. We'll have one of our coaches up here on our post-game show coming up. And we'll get ready for Perkins Trying Demon football as PT will play at McLeod tonight for game at 6.30. The game kicks off at 7 if you're going down. There's still plenty of time for our Demon fans who might be listening here to go down to McLeod. Nice play by the Cowgirls. A sliding tackle by Rodriguez to send the ball to the sideline. Right in front of the Illinois bench and a throw in. And now subs here as Sarah Goosa checks back in for the Cowgirls. Carrier back in along with Murray for Illinois. And I believe, uh, who's the other player? Yep, that's the two for Illinois. And Sarah Goosa, as I mentioned, for Oklahoma State. 17-20 to go in the game. Oklahoma State with a 2-0 lead at Score from the first half is held up here, and the Cowgirls now win it and play it on the attack from right to left. Into the forward end. This is Morgan down the far side. Into the forward end, deep. Looking for the chance in the corner. Still trying to dig it out. That ball goes to the sideline. Two on one down there. Illinois is going to win it, play it back up the ground, but the Cowgirls have numbers there at midfield. Now Jones in front on a cross. Sends it there to Beffer at the top of the 18, trying to get clear. Chance in front, blocked away. And a whistle before the sliding play there by Jones on the tackle. And this will be a foul on the Cowgirls, and this will be a free kick for the Illini with 16.40 to go. So we'll see who takes the kick here. They do and send it down the ground. Trying to find George at the forward end. It pinballs out, taken by Lee. Coming in a player from the left side. Played off the ball by Morgan. A two-on-one there. And the Cowgirls with Sarah Guza, the other player, knocking the ball away and taking the man off the ball on a clean play. No foul there. And play on, says the official, as the Cowgirls win it and bring it back the other way. This is Ganser, a deep ball, and nobody home for Oklahoma State. And so a pickup there by the keeper. With 16.02 to go, the Cowgirls with a 2-0 lead here in Stillwater, going for their fourth shutout of the year. Played in the middle by Illinois. Cowgirls went and send it back. Here's Haley Woodard. One on three. Tried to outrun three defenders. Outran one, but not the second and third one. And Illinois plays it back the other way. They go from left to right. Nice heel kick there by Tressfield to play it back. And now it'll be Saragusa off a kick by Lenhardt at midfield to play it back in the secondary defensively. And they'll go the other way here for Oklahoma State. Morgan, center of the ground. Oh, nice play by Illinois to play off the ball. That was Lexi Carrier. Centering pass, nobody home there, and send it back the other way. Center of the ground is Ganser up the middle. Around one man. Chance out front, little touch coming in is Huddleston from the right side. They pick her up quickly on a three-on-one. And we played off the ball. Now Hillman will just kick it to the sideline. This will go out of bounds for a Cowgirl throw-in at about the 12-yard line. And Kumba So getting ready to check back in for the Cowgirls. Looks like Hannah Webb is back in for Oklahoma State. And Lauren Cisla is back in for Illinois. So those subs here with 14.30 left in the match. may be the uh, ambulance to take the previously injured Illinois player to the uh, hospital. I say that, and it, the 
is driving past our location. They may be going somewhere else. Deep ball by the Cowgirls going into Woodard, but it bounces past her, and the keeper able to pick it up and whip it with her right arm back into play. Taken forward by George with 13.50 to go. George bringing it down by herself in traffic. Gets the ball a step ahead toward the corner. That ball roll across the back line, and this should be... Wow, they're going to say the Cowgirls deflected it, so this is going to be a corner kick for Illinois. Lauren Cecil, I believe, will take the kick over to the right of the keeper, Michaela Ongaro, and if my memory serves me correctly, that is Illinois' first corner of the second half and the second of the game of the Cowgirls' 12. Kelly Mayday, who had gone out, is back in for the Illini, and so is Kara Marbury, two of their starters, on offense. The clock continues to run down to 13 left. This kick will be to the right of Ungaro. Low line drive. Knocked down and out by So. They'll kick it again. And that off the back line and across for another corner by Illinois. So two quick ones here for the Illini after having very few in the game before now. They just dribble it in to the side of the 18 square on the far wing. Cowgirls just come out to meet the player who came in for the corner who wanted to send it in from that side, and they try to dig out and win the ball. Illinois takes it away, though. A good play by them. Send it back forward along the back line. They look for the cross, and it's going to go out, and that's a goal kick for Oklahoma State as it's off of the Illini. With 12.20 left in the game, again, if you just joined us, Haley Woodard, a goal early at 3.07. Was unassisted, a shot from 20 yards out. They counted it from 24 to be exact, left wing. J.C. Jones with her second off of a tap-in from the initial save by the keeper. Anna Beffer gets the assist, her seventh of the year, and the Cowgirls lead 2-0. Boy, trying to dig it out of their own end. Trouble. Angaro runs into the Illini player, and I think it was more initiated by Illinois. And Michaela up and all right. This will be a free kick off a Illini foul. Kind of got the crowd's attention there. And we'll play on here with 11.30 to go. So the 2-0 lead for the Cowgirls up the far sideline. They go on offense. This Webb trying to dig it out and can't control it. It'll be a throw-in for Illinois. Again, Abilene Christian here on Sunday, 1 o'clock match. It's a buy one, get one free ticket day. So bring a friend to the ballpark and come on out and watch Cowgirls soccer. Foul now on the Cowgirls and... Right off the throw-in, we'll have an Illinois free kick. About five yards or maybe eight to the left of the halfway line on the other side of the ground. Eleven minutes left in the game. OSU leads 2-0. With the win, a strong kick toward the center of the ground. That ball headed by the Cowgirls hits a Illinois player in the back of the head, and Oklahoma State will have numbers and play it forward. Jones and Woodward, one on three. Haley trying to run it down. Gets a touch. Tries for another touch. That ball is kicked out past the corner to the left of the flag and a corner kick coming up for the Cowgirls. What a play by Haley Woodard. And that was set up by a now down the ground pass by Oklahoma State. Ganser will take the corner here as we'll drop to 10 minutes left by the time this occurs. Cowboy football tonight at South Alabama, 7 o'clock tip. The pregame is on right now on 93.7. Left-footed kick by Ganser into the square. Just past Woodard, who had a chance near the near post. And now we get a whistle and a card immediately here. They're going to call this on Oklahoma State on Kumba So That was away from the ball and not sure what that was all about. Maybe an illegal push in the back. I like it when the fans ask what happened because I'm watching the ball too and the other fan says push in the back. I have to go with what he said. Free kick here for Illinois. Another card for the Cowgirls. That's either their second or third in the match. Nine and a half to play. Cowgirls win it off the kick at the center circle and play it up the ground to Gansra along the wing near side. That is J.C. Jones. Jones wearing the pink headband today and an arm check foul here. Trying to hook her with Maroney. That's a hockey move right there when they try to hook you with the stick. Instead, trying to get her with the 
left arm with her right arm and a free kick right here in front of us for Claire Ganser and the Cowgirls. The angles to the right. Keeper looking back our direction as Ganser with the left foot may try to bend this in. Low line drive, blocked in the air, but to the center of the ground, knocked down by the Cowgirls in the 18. Nobody home to take the centering pass, and Illinois clears it back to the halfway line. And a header there by Rodriguez. Cowgirls look to try to turn it, but Illinois has numbers streaking down the ground, and here they come. Can Saragusa get back to the ball, or will it go across the line first for a goal kick? The ball across the line first for a goal kick. Cowgirls will sub in as Lorraine Tressfield, who's Played a lot today, but came out a little bit ago, is back in. And she and Saragusa have been trading minutes here in this matchup. The Sass, was that Morgan? It was Morgan who came back in, I believe. I thought it was Trestfield. I'm sorry. It was Lorraine. Okay. Table had it wrong. Well, the table had it right. The announcer had it wrong. It is Lorraine Trestfield who checked back in for the Cowgirls. Throw in here for Oklahoma State off the kick by Illinois. With 7.50 to go. And we had about a six-minute delay or seven-minute delay a little bit ago because of an injury to an Illinois player. Possible fractured arm, and so they're taking her to the hospital. Maroney off a kick down the ground, played it back to midfield. The Cowgirls have numbers. And so blocks it and brings it back the other way. Ganser up the ground, nice pass. But too strong for Huddleston and intercepted and brought back by the Illini. Ganser, nice play there, and we get a foul, and this is a hand check here on Cecla. Lawrence Cecla is a junior out of Naperville, Illinois. That's a Chicago suburb. I have a relative who lives there. My sister's only son lives in Naperville. Left footed kick by Ganser, trying to get it to Huddleston, knocked away by. Line and we get a foul here on Huddleston on the kick that went out of bounds. So a free kick for Illinois right here below us with 6.50 to go in the game. Cowgirls with a 2 0 lead. That lead from the first half is held up for this whole second half. Each team has had chances in this second half. Cowgirls 6.40 away from their fourth shutout. Now Illinois, a deep ball, and boy, a play outside the 18 there, and this will be a stop the clock situation here and I believe this is on Charmaine Morgan. We may have another card here coming up. And the Cowgirls without Marlo Zoller for this matchup because of a red card on Sunday against UTSA. Just a straight foul here, no card. So the Cowgirls will see Illinois with another chance here. The angle's to the right from the left point. Four-man wall for the Cowgirls at about the 22-yard line. The drop under seven left. Garo has to play it here, and we'll see what they do. Illinois setting the ball for play from our official Randy Cook. No sense of urgency here on the part of the Illini. And here we go. Wind at the back of the kicker. Now the official sets the defense for play with the foam there, and now we're going to be set to go. This is taking about 40 seconds. Illini approached the ball, low line drive kick off that wall, played down by the Illini, a shot toward the far post, and a diving save to her right by Angaro. Not sure that ball would have gotten in, but you don't take the chance. That came with 6.25 left in the match. And maybe Illinois' best look on goal in this half. Kayla kicks a high kick against the wind, which has sort of died down a little bit again, but not that much. Cowgirls can't win the ball with six minutes to go, and so it'll be Illinois at the halfway line. Play it forward. Cecil again on the near wing, looking for Murray. And across the ground to Carrier. Carrier toward the far sideline, and Webb's just going to let that ball roll out. This will be a Cowgirl throw in at their end. Defensively to our right as they go from right to left here in the second half with 5.40 to go in this one. Nice play and a takeaway by So. Here's So up the ground, across the halfway line. Looks to play it on a touch to Huddleston. Now near side to Ganser. They have Haley Woodard in the middle. Ganser sets it up. Ball trickles into the 18, but the keeper comes out of the six and makes a play. They 
We're looking for Haley to cut off her man and go straight toward the goal. But ball was way in front. Kick here by Illinois. Knocked down on a header by the Cowgirls. Ganser wins it. Sends it back up the ground. And I just touch it here with five minutes to go and send it back down their way. And we get a play that goes out of bounds here. And they may have called a foul. We'll see. Rodriguez over here on the contact. This will be a free kick for Illinois. They set it very quickly and get started. Mayday turns it. Cross. Blocked by the Cowgirls right side of the 18. A couple of touches here. Illinois with a chance and a big, strong kick over the top of the crossbar. That came from way out by, I think, Katie Lee. Subs here for the Cowgirls and for Illinois. As Beffer checks back in here for the Cowgirls. And a number of subs here for Illinois as Barker is back in. And uh, play will continue here. This will be a goal kick for Oklahoma State. Angaro does not take the kick. It is taken instead by Tressfield out of bounds and a throw in here by Illinois in front of their own bench. Four minutes left in the game. They can't do anything with it. It's a throw in for the Cowgirls. Ten yards farther down the ground. Clock is an ally of the Cowgirls now, not of Illinois. Illinois with a header off the throw in. They're trying to bring it down the ground, but have to play it back to their defender. This is Sarah Warren. Plays it up the ground to Carrier. Carrier to the center circle there for Velen. And this pinballs around for Illinois to get another shot at it. There's a chance there. Kumba so the intercept, and then a tumble and a foul here on the Illini. With 3.27 to go. And we'll have football tonight on 105.5 KGFY here in Stillwater. Perkins trying at McLeod. 3A, 4A action tonight. Rick Lominek, Brody Myers on the call. That comes up with pregame at 6.30. Game is at 7. Three minutes left in this one as the Cowgirls lead 2-0 here in Stillwater. Illinois with the ball. This side of the halfway line, going left to right. Barker brings it across on the dribble. Nice touch there on the play by Illinois as they send it forward. Trying to play it ahead toward the top of the 18. They're still playing, trying to get one back here in the final three minutes. Deflected for a moment there by Tressfield. Now out to the wing near side. A chance here and across. It goes off of a player and bounces back outside the 18. Now another blast. It goes way off. High and up over the crossbar. That was Murray, I think, on the first touch coming in from this near wing with 2.20 to go. And we'll talk, we hope, with one of our coaches coming up here on our post game. Abilene Christian in here on Sunday, again, 1 o'clock. And if you buy a ticket, you get another ticket for free. And so bring a friend to the game. Bring somebody who's never been to see a soccer match. They'll enjoy it. Chance here for Illinois down in front. Veland, ball pinballs around. Now an opportunity for Mayday again. That ball is blocked. Over to the far wing this time. Another chance in front on a cross. Try to find Chapa from the left side. That ball goes across. It's a goal kick for Oklahoma State. And we're under two minutes to go in the game. Goals in the first half by Haley Woodard and J.C. Jones and the Cowgirls with a minute and a half to go in this one. Ganser will take the kick. Kicks it outside the 18. Not a real strong kick. Illinois Chapel will intercept. Now gets it back off of a touch. Looks for the cross to the near wing for Barker coming in as the wind picks back up again here. Barker 1v1 over there on that far wing. Looks for the cross near the back line. The ball is blocked out. This will be a corner for Illinois. And we'll have about a minute left in the match when the corner takes place. Kick is to the left of Ungaro. Low line drive, headed out by the Cowgirls, and Woodard almost with a breakaway there, and now a chance that she can run to the ball. It's blocked out past the halfway line. That ball's going to roll to the sideline, though, before anybody can get to it, and it's out of bounds for a Cowgirl throw in, I think. Oh, they're going to give it to Illinois with 42 seconds left. Well, almost two chances there for Haley Woodard to have a breakaway. Now a chance here. Here comes Jones, 1v1. Into Haley, ahead of her man. Shoots, and right to the defender, the keeper, 
And she may have been off sides anyway, and that's what the official on the far side calls. So that wouldn't have counted anyway had it gone in, but a nice save. That won't even count as a save by Cunningham with 15 seconds left. The ball back to the other end of the ground. Here comes Illinois one last time. Down to George. Cross in front. Blocked down by the Cowgirls. That's going to do it. Ganser will clear it out of the zone. And Oklahoma State defeats Illinois by the final of 2-0 here in Stillwater. And this crowd very appreciative here this afternoon. We'll take a break. Come back and start our post game after a timeout. This is Cowgirls Soccer from Learfield. Can you name the university that has won the most football games? At Johnson's of Kingfisher, we have a record number of new Ram 1500s and 2500s, America's longest-lasting pickups. In stock and during Ram Power Days, our low prices will win.